Many engineering problems require solving a system of linear equations. These types of systems can be solved more efficiently if expressed in compact matrix form. In this video, I'll briefly review systems of equations informing the matrix equation, and then I'll show you how to use MATLAB's backslash function to quickly solve it. For a simple set of three independent equations and three unknowns, we can be sure there's only one unique solution. If any of these equations can be expressed as a linear combination of the others, then they are not independent, and will likely have the case where there's an infinite number of valid solutions. On the other hand, if any pair of equations are inconsistent, then we'll have the case that there's no solution to the system. Building the matrix equation from a system of equations is a straightforward application of the vector dot product. Often, it's helpful to first sketch out the form of the matrix equation and define the unknowns vector x. Then, by applying the dot product rule to each equation, we can build up the A matrix and B vector one row at a time. From the first equation, we have that A plus 3B plus 7C equals 1. So, in the first row of the A matrix, we'll put the values 1, 3, and 7, and in the first row of the B vector, we'll put 1. We can do a quick check to see that this agrees with the equation. Multiplying the matrix A by the vector x requires us to use the dot product such that each row of A will be dotted with the column vector x, and that product should be equal to the corresponding row in the column vector B. In this case, 1 times A plus 3 times B plus 7 times C is the dot product, and all that should equal 1, which agrees with the first equation. Repeating this process for all of the equations will yield the complete matrix equation. Solving this equation is a matter of doing a bit of linear algebra. With AX equals B, it seems clear that the solution should be to left multiply both sides by the inverse of A, since the inverse of a matrix times the matrix yields the identity. However, this only works if the matrix A has an inverse, which not all matrices have. For instance, a square n by n matrix doesn't have an inverse if its rank is less than n, or equivalently, if the determinant is zero. If A is not a square matrix, then in general, an inverse, at least in the traditional sense, doesn't exist either. In this case, the system is either classified as overdetermined or underdetermined, depending on whether there are more rows than columns or vice versa. Solving problems like these can be tricky and require a working understanding of linear algebra. Fortunately, the backslash function in MATLAB alleviates some of these issues as it's a robust solution to the problem of varying matrix classifications. For example, if A is invertible and square, then the solution x equals a backslash b is essentially the same thing as left multiplying by the inverse of a. It will even warn you if the matrix is close to being singular, in other words, if the determinant is close to zero. If a is rectangular, the backslash function will work out the solution in the least square sense, whether it's overdetermined or under. Anyways, back to our example, we can see that our matrix is both square and has full rank, so we can conclude that it's invertible. Applying the backslash function allows us to solve for the vector x, which contains all of the unknown variables. By our definition, the vector x contains the variables a, b, and c, so a equals 0 0.6, b and c are both equal to 0.04. The concept of systems of equations appears frequently in engineering. A classic example is analyzing a simple statically determinant truss. Taking a simple 2D truss, we can solve for all of the forces in each of the truss members to analyze the design. One way to do this is to use the method of joints, which simply has you do a force balance at each joint. For a statically determinant truss, you can extract as many equations as there are unknowns and easily solve the system of equations using MATLAB. Let's see how to do this for a simple truss. A simple truss assumes that each beam is a two-force member, which means it can only be in tension or compression. It also assumes that each joint is held together by a frictionless pin. The support at point A is called a pinned support, 
which means it can provide reaction forces in the horizontal and vertical directions, whereas the support at C is called a roller support, meaning it can only provide reaction forces in a direction normal to its support surface. We'll analyze this truss by doing a force balance at each joint, starting with joint A. This is a pinned support, so we need to include the reaction forces in both the horizontal and vertical directions. Additionally, we sketch arrows representing the forces in the members AB and AC. It's smart to always draw the arrows away from the joint as a convention. This keeps all of your force diagrams consistent. Then, once we solve for each force, a positive value indicates that the member is indeed in tension, while a negative value indicates the member is actually in compression. At this point, we'll set a convention for the positive horizontal and vertical directions and set up our force equations. The sum of forces in the x direction should sum to equal zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction should sum to equal zero, since this is a static element and not accelerating. Performing a force balance at point A yields two equations that we can use to analyze a truss. Applying this method to all three of the joints yields six equations. Then, just as before, we can build the matrix equation by first defining our unknowns matrix X, and then building the A matrix and B vector row by row. Once we're finished completing the matrix equation, we can let MATLAB handle the computations by using the backslash function to return the solution to the unknowns vector X, which contains all six unknowns. We can easily verify that the A matrix is full rank by either using the rank function to see if the matrix has a rank 6, or the determinant function to see if the determinant is non-zero. Confirming that this matrix has full rank, we can conclude that this matrix is indeed invertible, and so we should get the same result as the backslash function by using the matrix inversion function. It's remarkable how many engineering problems can be formulated using matrix equations. MATLAB is well suited for these types of problems because it's highly capable of quickly performing matrix computations that represent any number of engineering applications. Systems of linear equations and matrix equations appear frequently in engineering mechanics for both statics and dynamics, fluid mechanics, heat and mass transfer, and even system dynamics and control systems when you start expressing dynamical systems in state space form. Being able to solve matrix equations quickly and efficiently using a numerical package like MATLAB will add to your skill set and make you a stronger engineer overall. <laughs>